You fucking got me good, didn't you? Hmm, iron dagger. Seems some adventurer may have, uh, met his end. All sorts of weapons strewn about. Or perhaps the wizard was working on reanimating weapons, giving them a mind of their own. I have read of such things. I think that I would like to see it, but uh, again, I may take that back immediately upon encountering one. Hmm. This place is so strange. How do I get any further into this place? I'm quite lost, I feel. Is this new ground? It all looks the same. One would be prone to madness living in a place like this. I've had enough. Oh. Up. I see. This is... This is quite a mystery to me. No wonder at all that this man ended up losing his mind. I was in there only a short time, and I felt my mind starting to go. We must find our way back to Richard. There are some more ruins just there. Ah, oh, friends. The rolling hills. I've always been more one for the plains of elsewhere, but you have to be able to enjoy something like this. The path winds up, the path winds round. Where it goes, Randharma's found. Yeah, rhyming's also, yeah, my nuts. Not so strong suit. <laughs> Please forgive. Hmm. What is this? I suppose this is where we've left Richard. Little friend! Yes, the bear. The bear just there. The conjurer. I had almost forgotten that lady. I had almost forgotten my own name. The strange place it was, friends. Ah. I'm sincerely hoping that I don't need to uh, go back up to the Elven Gardens district. But it seems this is the way that we are headed. Is there any sort of boat down there that I could take? It might cut my travel time down. Or maybe I should just regale you, friends, with some more thoughts of my family. My uh, family technically is a broken family. My biological father had left when I was uh, yet a kid. I believe I was two. And my uh, stepfather He's a very stern man. Um, he would never lay a hand on us. My mom would not allow that. But he never showed Brandar the sort of affection that obviously he longs for. Hence why I am playing the loot for random strangers seeking their approval instead. Mm. He showed great, uh, great care to my brother. My brother was always more a sort of warrior, and uh, while my shield arm is strong, I definitely would prefer standing back with a bow. I would make the joke about uh, playing my stringed instrument, you know, talking about the bow. My stepdad never thought that was funny either. Quite sad to me. We never did have the same sense of humor. I can only wonder if uh, the roles of my brother and I had been switched. If my if my biological father had stayed around. But then of course I would not have had a, uh, a half-brother there, would I? Quite curious. The places that the mind goes. 
Plaza District. Well, we've made it to the city. Be good boy, Richard. Love you so much. Uh, I don't necessarily want to talk to this Boris. I kind of hope that his face will ring a bell. Simply because... Everybody has been talking to me as if I, it, I've met him before. Or at least Joffrey, but he seems a strange sort as well. Reminds me of Caius Cassades in that regard. I wonder if everybody must be mad to become a member of the Blades. I guess that would make good sense why they reached out to Brandar, hmm? <laughs> Luther Broad's boarding house. I think this is where I want to be. I can't recall the name, but my journal is all the way in the bottom of the pack. How are you? Ah, hello to you, Winson. Yes, Boris, just here. How are you? Not There's bad. Luther Brown. See you. Bye. Oh, that was the shortest conversation I've ever <laughs> held witness to. Hello to you. Move along, friend. Oh. Alrighty then. Um. Hello, stranger. Would you like to sit down and have a drink, perhaps? This fellow does not seem uh, so friendly, hmm? Sit down. Don't say anything. Just do what I say. Okay. Let's let's have a little talk, shall we? Listen, I'm going to get up in a minute and walk out of here. That guy in the corner behind me will follow me. You follow him. Hmm. I'm ready when you are. Good. Remember, wait for him to follow me. I want to see what he'll do. As do I. I'm unsure what is happening, friends. <laughs> Just going down here. Thank you so much. So hospitable. Hmm. Some trouble. Oh, sure enough. Turned into a Mythic Dawn agent. He looked like a normal man. Oh. Strange book about the Mythic Dawn. Bars. Good work. I am glad to see you, by the way. You just caught me at a bad time. What? Who are you? What have you learned? What? What is happening to my mind? I don't remember your face at all, friend. The assassins who killed the Emperor were part of a Deirdre cult known as the Mythic Dawn. Apparently mm. worshipped the Deirdre Lord Mayrun's Dagon. I've been tracking their agents in the Imperial City. I guess they noticed. Well, I, I have to tell you that the enemy has gained control of the amulet. What? They took it from Joffrey? Things are worse than I had thought. Hmm. On the plus side, I did find Martin Septim, and I have delivered him to the Cloud Ruler Temple. But I think we still have some work to be done here, getting the amulet back and whatnot. Thank Talos he lives! Martin Septim, you say? We hmm. will restore him to the throne. It is the sworn duty of all blades! Well, Brandar's proud to help you in that fact, Boris. Uh, so what is our next move? There's a scholar at the Arcane University. Tarmina's her name. Supposed to be an expert on Diedrich cults. Why don't you take that book to her? See what she makes of it. I'll keep running down leads on the Mythic Dawn Network. If you learn anything, you can find me at Luther Broad's. May Talos guide you. Who is Tarmina, Boris? Like I said, she's one of the brains over at the Arcane University. Supposed to know everything there is to know about Diedrich cults. Do I need the Mage's Guild recommendation to get in? You don't know. You're just going to look at me. Alright, very well. Thank you, Boris. I hope you learned something from Tarmina about that book. This might just be the break we need. Hmm. I hope I'm able to learn something as well. A little bit, uh, overweighted here, friends. Hmm. I suppose I could get rid of this giant mace. That battle axe. Oh, there's some goodies in here. Don't mind if I do. Perhaps I could find some lockpicks in this place as well. 
I'm glad I didn't waste any on there. Oh my. Quite the job to be done here. Mm-hmm. You've got it. Ah. Ah! Three picks left. Ah! Oh, and nothing inside. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Luther Broad. You fucking got me good, didn't you? Ah. Oh, what well. do you need, friend? Oh, nothing at all. Thank you so much. How are you? Not bad. I understand that Authorellos isn't a bad man to talk to, if you need to learn how not to be seen. Mm -hmm. I heard that he stood in one place for hours just to teach himself how to be sneakier. Sounds boring, <laughs> but whatever works for you. <laughs> Good day. Take care. What do you need, friend? Luther Hello. Broad's boarding house. I'm Luther. You want beds or food? See me. Pleased to meet you, Luther. Please take care of my friend Boris here. He's going to be staying for a little while. I hope you'll make him feel quite at home. I just wanted to let you know that he is very important to me and all of us for that matter. Hmm. Must go find Tarmina at the Arcane University and see what she has to say. I'm quite unsure if they will even let me in, to be quite honest, but I do have at least a recommendation from the Mages Guild. Surely this is enough. Or are they going to be sticklers about the paperwork? Maybe Brandar can talk his way in. Or maybe Remember, we can just, uh... In the oh is my. No trespassing. Not at all, friends. Hmm. I'm unsure of the way. Just have to look at my map for a minute. It must be near the Arboretum, to be sure. The mages love plants and things like this. Brewing their little potions. Brandar has a bit of a penchant for that as well. Hooray! We're in here now, friends! Surely this is the Arcane University. Look at the spire. Does it draw power from the heavens? Are they using it to fuel some experiments? Hmm. Mysterious. Oh my. Even the fires burn a different color in here. Battle mage. Hmm. I'd better take care not to break any laws here, friends. Could I just walk inside? Is it allowed? Archmage's Lobby. Well? Tarmina. So you are here. I've heard much about you. What are these? Hmm. With only one pick, I suppose I should not bother finding out. Oh! I'm sorry, Paper. Yes. Much thievery. Rely on the local fighters guild and mages guild to secure protection and advice. Oh, I do love those guilds, both of them. A geomancy. Mm. <clears throat> Long has the guild been puzzled by the Aelid ruins and the strange artifacts that power them. Oh, I learned spells for this. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, the strange artifacts that power them even to this day. The brilliant glow of their arcane stones serves as a humbling reminder of their mastery over fields of study that we before now have barely glimpsed. Yes, before now. For after many years of immeasurably slow research, we have finally been able to wrest some of the secrets from the magic-saturated halls. While our understanding is as of yet infantile next to the Aelid themselves, progress should now be swifter. Finally, we have discovered the basic tenets that govern the art of geomancy. Geomancy is neither the attraction, extraction of energy from a stone, nor, strictly speaking, is it the means for storing energy for later use. 
Rather, it is the amplification and refinement of the raw power that feeds a spell. In the instant between the vision and the incantation as the mage summons forth his or her inter reserve in preparation for release, it is possible to divert this power through a prepared gem. A gem which resonates at the magical level in much the same way that the prismatic quartz can be polished to resonate with light. In effect, the geomancy is nothing more than the magical manifestation of the mundane phenomenon one can observe by casting the sun through a finely ground lens to create a burning pinpoint. We have discovered the two key points that further elaborate this basic concept. Firstly, different types of gems resonate with different kinds of magic. While it has long been known that various gems will prefer to shear in specific ways, suggesting an underlying pattern that remains undiscovered, we do not know why this behavior should continue to magical resonance. But the effects are undeniable. A gem's quality also plays a tremendous role in the efficiency of geomantic process. Our second observation is that a gem cannot be used for geomancy without some degree of preparation. Our process is included further in this document as well as the appendix. While it is neither slow nor costly or unreasonably complex, it is quite unexpected. This perhaps explains why it has taken so long to discover. Attempts to focus energy through an unprepared gem have resulted in a wide variety of dangerous and thankfully temporary effects. We have discontinued this line of study and advise others not to resume it. Of note is the destruction of a gem once it has been used as a geomantic focus of any useful power. It simply crumbles to dust. We suspect that the process of amplification destabilizes it somehow, and that when spell energy ceases to flow, its form is unsustainable. Why Aelid stones do not suffer a similar fate is unknown at this time, but some have suggested that it is because the various warding and light spells active on Aelid crystals are eternal. Dogmatic enchantment tells us that this is impossible without the use of a soul gem. Research will continue. We are confident that the Council will be well pleased with our efforts and authorize the procurement of a cask of cut jewels as per our requests attached so that we may resume work. Appendix. Oh yes, pearls. While pearls are not typically thought of as gems, they do have aspects of a structured mineral composition. They respond well to some illusion spells, particularly light. Topaz, responsive to shielding and warding energies related to physical damage of an animate body. Opal, the iridescent combination of qualities in there, surprisingly beautiful and chameleonic stones, wards their user against the effects of all elements. Fascinating. Ruby allows awesome amplification of destruction spells, particularly elemental fire damage. Use cautiously. Emerald amplifies bodily energies, but still have to use cautiously. Mm, amethyst. These stones of noble blood channel magic capable of dispelling other magical forces around them, negating their residence entirely. They also may grant agility of thought. Sapphire, unlike other gems, Sapphire tends to destroy the matrix of a spell while continuing to amplify its power. This prevents coherent spell casting, but does lend the Sapphire an obvious use of a as a source of magicka. Diamond, expecting great things of this king among stones, we were not disappointed. The diamond responded the most positively to pure magicka and can create excellent protections of a metaphysical nature. Gold and silver, again, while not strictly a gem, precious metals do have some degree of magical resonance, particularly in the use of healing and restoration. Copper and platinum, these precious metals are also capable of magical resonance, particularly in the use of transmutation of light energy, corrosion and resistance to damage from other metals respectively. My goodness. Appendix 2nd. Instructions for preparation of a geomantic focus. Absolutely nothing. Well, I suppose I should figure this out. I have learned a few spells. Hmm. The technique does seem simple. Perhaps we will be able to do it, friends. And I, of course, know the fundaments of alchemy. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.